welcome back to Simpler Adventures. This is Melanie and I'm here to talk to you today about entitlements for Oconus Moves, uh, mostly about the different shipping entitlements that um, we have various different types of shipping that go um, to Oconus Moves where we don't have those for um, local or um, Conus Moves around the United States. So I just wanted to talk about the various different types of shipments, where you're gonna find them, who is involved and um, how you know how much you have um, for weight allowances for each of those shipments. Um, another dry subject, but it seems to be a lot of um, information out there on the internet and it's kind of not all together. So I just wanted to talk about um, what you rate, what your entitlements are and how you go about setting those up. So as a Marine family, we have moved 11 times in 12 years. My husband's been in for 22 years. And before me, he actually moved himself too. Um, this is known as a Diddy move or a PPM. PPM standing for a personally procured move, uh, meaning you move all your stuff yourself. You can do um, partial ditties or PPMs, or you can do full ditties or PPMs. And we have always done full ditty moves. Uh, we did these for various different reasons, but the number one and two reason being that we care about our stuff more than movers care about our stuff. And our move here to Colorado, we had literally three broken things. One was a pie plate, one was a um, crock liner for the crock, um, crock pot, and then one was a picture frame. Everything else made it here safely with a few scratches, but when you're thinking about um, military moves. I'm sure everybody's heard the horror stories. And so we choose to move our own stuff because it's organized. We can pack it slowly. We know what to unpack. Um, you know, our essentials boxes get packed last and then get unpacked first. Um, and the second reason is because we've always made money doing it. So why not move our stuff safely and make money doing it? Um, it does come with its own set of headaches, but we are kind of professionals at it by now, moving 11 times in 12 years, I guess 13 years now. Um, so I will do a completely different video about Diddy moves eventually, but for today, we're going to talk about those Oconus um, entitlements and um, you cannot do Diddy moves for this. So um, what can we do to make this better? and what are the different shipments and what should I be sending them in them and when should I ship them? If you're brand new to this or you're not brand new to this, the very first place you should be looking is the Joint Travel Regulation, which is also called the JTR. It is a very long document and it covers absolutely every entitlement you can make um, when you're making these moves, whether it's CONUS or OCONUS. This document um, is very well set up and you can click on the chapters and jump to the place that you're looking for instead of scrolling through all of it if that's what you need. Um, so that is your very first place you're gonna look at um, when you are making this move. In there, it describes all the various different moving parts. So your four shipments are going to be your unaccompanied baggage, also known as UAB, UB, express shipment, fast shipment, um, and then you're going to have your household goods, also HHG, that's the majority of your household. You also will have non-temp storage as well as vehicle storage. And finally, if you wanna count the fifth one, that's gonna be what you're taking on the airplane with you. Um, and I will discuss that briefly as well. Here comes the fun and confusing part. Within each of these shipments, your UAB, unaccompanied baggage, your household goods and your non-temp storage, you're going to have your very own um, transportation service provider, which is your TSP. And inside of that, you're going to have your origin agent and your destination agent, one for each shipment. So the issue here is that um, your unaccompanied baggage and your household goods is not necessarily going to have the same um, TSP or it's not going to have the same origin or destination agent. For us, that means we have Sudif as one of ours and then we have Covan as the other one. Um, the TSP is just your agent who is 
organizing and orchestrating the entire move. So you have one for each type of shipment. These get assigned when you go into move.mil and you put in your information about um, where you're moving from and where you're moving to, and then the government will assign um, that TSP for you, and they are the ones that you go to with questions. The TSP will then assign your origin and your destination agent, um, and then those are the people who come to your house and physically pack it up. Your TSP does not come to your house and pack it up. They're just organizing the whole shipment. Um, sometimes they will use their trucks and move your stuff around the country, but they are separate from the agents. So what I recommend is when it is assigned, go ahead and make a document with all of these different contact people because it gets so confusing when you're talking about unaccompanied baggage household goods and non-temp storage, and you have different providers, different agents. So you're gonna wanna put that information into one document so that when you have a question about something, you can go right to that document. They also have their shipping um, account numbers that's unique to you. So you're gonna want that one there as well. Next up, how do you find this information out? So in move.mil, um, you will have all of this information will be there except for the non-temp storage one. Non-temp storage is in a different system. It is not in the DPS system, which is also the move.mil system. Um, it is in the top system, T-O-P-S. I have no clue what that stands for. I have no clue how to get to it. However, we have a contact person um, down in Colorado Springs that is handling it, and then they outsource it to a local um, origin agent just like the other two systems do but once it's moved to the top system TOPS um, you cannot see it anymore so it feels like maybe it's not scheduled or organized just know that in any of these um, your origin agents and destination agents can change and they will change so make sure you're updating that master spreadsheet that you have with all the contact information um, we've had it change several times now, what are these shipments? When should you schedule them? What is the order? Um, this all varies on where you're going and what types of resources you will have there and how long it's gonna take your stuff to get there. So I will talk about each different shipment and then at the end, I will talk about the order in which you should ship it so that your stuff gets there in a reasonably organized manner um, there is variations on the order so i'll discuss that at the end first of all your household goods um, is the majority of your stuff so it's going to be all of your furniture that you plan to take um, it's going to be all of your off-season clothes all of the stuff in your cabinets that you may not be using every day um, stuff from your garage things like that um, each individual rank and whether or not you have dependents or not will let you know how much of a weight allowance you have. That's also in the move.mil system. You're going to get a printout of your entitlements from your TLE to your DLA. Um, TLE meaning lodging, DLA is your dislocation allowance, and then of course how many pounds you rate. We are an E8 family and we rate 14,000 pounds. Um, we've had to definitely purge because we moved here with 17 or 18,000 pounds and we had to get more furniture for this house because it is a thousand square foot larger than the last house and now we're going 2,000 square foot smaller than this house. So we're having to get rid of stuff, put stuff in storage. So your next is unaccompanied baggage. Your unaccompanied baggage is your essentials. It cannot have furniture unless it's not put together, such as like a TV stand that's in a box still or something like that. It can also have a crib and it can have a TV that's 32 inches or smaller. Um, anything else needs to be small and be able to be put in a box. So you're allowed to take 2,000 pounds to Okinawa, and I believe anywhere in the world you can take 2,000 pounds of unaccompanied baggage. However, if you take 800 to 1,000 pounds, it gets there faster because it does go on a plane versus on the ship. Um, if you 
send more than a thousand pounds, it's going to go on a ship and it's going to take the same amount of time. So if you can keep it under that 800 to a thousand range, um, that's going to be your best bet to get it there faster since this is your essential items. Um, a lot of people will take bikes, um, toys that maybe they left behind. You're also going to want to take um, an extra set of um, your linens just so you have two sets um, and then any essential kitchen items as well as any pet needs that you might have that you're not able to take on the airplane these are all things you're going to want to take in that unaccompanied or express shipment that non-temp storage shipment is going to be everything that you can't take because your house is too small or maybe you're just using um, lend furniture from the base. Um, some bases are allowing you to keep that furniture the entire time you're at a duty station. Some um, like Okinawa now uh, allows your entire entitlement, your weight allowance, they allow all of that to go. So they are not allowing you to keep that loaner furniture um, past the 90 day mark once you um, borrow it. So you're going to want to take all the furniture that you need, keeping in mind that many of the bedrooms are much smaller there. Um, the houses are much smaller, so you're going to take what you need and then put the rest in storage. Um, other items that you might keep in storage include just kind of, I call them dust collectors, collectible things that um, maybe you don't need in your new house or books that you don't need in your new house. But keep in mind that these are not temperature or climate regulated storage facilities. We're lucky. Colorado is very dry, so our stuff should be good. But um, just keep in mind when you're putting stuff in storage that if you're not going to miss it for three years, you might be able to get rid of it too. When talking about these weight allowances, the weight allowances are for the entire shipment. It is not just per item. You can take, for us, it's 14,000 pounds. That is spread out between the unaccompanied baggage, the household goods, and the storage. Anything over that, you will pay for. It may be a while before you pay for it, but you will pay for it eventually. They will catch up to you and they will take it out of the paycheck. So you have to decide, um, is it worth keeping if it's, going if I'm going to have to pay to ship it later um, there is no set amount for that overage um, it bear it's it's um, an average of how much it costs your stuff to move so how much did it cost the unaccompanied baggage versus the household goods versus the non temp storage and they average the amount per pound and then that's what you get charged I've seen a dollar fifteen to a dollar eighty. Um, so just you really keep that in mind when you're you're packing your stuff up and deciding what to keep versus what to purge and what to store. Um, you don't want to be caught off guard at retirement with that big bill that you were not expecting because you kept a very heavy dresser that now you have no interest in now that you've moved back to the states. Your other shipment is the vehicle shipment. Um, you are, we are entitled one vehicle to be shipped to um, Okinawa, but uh, it's more costly to ship it and then um, make it regulation for Japan. So we are opting to put one in storage if we don't sell it. So we went ahead and signed up for the storage, the vehicle storage. Um, we may sell it last minute or we may put it in storage but we went ahead and got um, the approval for the storage and then we can cancel it later um, when you put a vehicle in storage it needs to be white glove clean that it goes for shipping too meaning there can be no hair nothing can be left in the vehicle they will move it every 30 days to keep um you know fluids moving through the engines but um most people do opt to um, sell it if they can if they're not going to be completely upside down in the vehicle um, by selling it a lot of people will opt to sell it CarMax Carvana um, all these places are great options to last minute sell so there are a lot of regulations for storing or shipping um, from the amount of gas that's in it and um, 
you cannot have any dirt. You cannot leave any personal items in it aside from jackets. Um, so just keep that in mind if you plan to store or ship a vehicle. Though it's not quite a shipment, one of the things um, that we are entitled to is two checked bags per person um, when you are traveling on the Rotator or the Patriot Express. We have opted to get um, heavy duty Rubbermaid totes from Sam's Club for about $10 each that fall within the linear inches allowed. Um, if you are flying on any airline, check out the linear inches that are height times width times length. Um, and so you can use boxes if that makes more sense or suitcases. So we are allowed two suitcases per person plus a carry-on um, and then a personal item as well. So your carry-on being a roller bag that'll go in the overhead compartment and your personal item will need to go at your feet. So we are allowed a lot. We do plan to bring um, more clothes. We're gonna use um, vacuum roll up bags to make more room. We also need um, to bring one set of linens per bed for Okinawa. That one set of linens is a twin for children, a fool or queen for adults. Um, so we are bringing those with us in a vacuum bag. That includes, we need a blanket. Um, you can obviously have your sponsor purchase those for you. Uh, we are opting to bring them with us in our crates um, as well as kitchen essentials. I'm bringing my Instant Pot because living in a hotel, um, we're still going to want to eat and Instant Pot can be a rice cooker. It can be a pressure cooker. It can be a slow cooker. I can saute stuff in that. So I am opting to take up the space with an Instant Pot. I will also bring um, some smaller kitchen items such as measuring cups, a can opener, um, and some kitchen towels, things like that. You do can get a box of loner kitchen stuff too, but um, some of these things are just preferences for me. Um, so I will be bringing that, some beach stuff, towels, don't forget your set of towels, um, just all the linens that you would need and any of the kitchen stuff that you prefer to have. I'll bring some spices and things like that to um, use while we're in lodging or in quarantine um, at our contingency housing um, with a full-size kitchen. So um, it, it is a lot. You do have to try to figure out how you're going to get it around the airport. We've come up with a plan. I will share that once we try it out. Um, right now, I don't know if it will work. I'm hoping it does because this can make um, those who are traveling Oconus so much um, it can make it so much easier and so much more organized. And um, the number one thing I see is I wish I brought less stuff because it was so chaotic with kids and a dog and all the stuff. And so um, that, as soon as we try it out, we will share that with everyone, but I don't wanna give some bad advice because we haven't done it yet and we're not sure it's gonna work. Finally, how do you know what order to send your stuff in? I see this question over and over and there's two different options. You have the options of um, sending your household goods stuff first or your unaccompanied baggage stuff first. Um, there's no right or wrong answer for us. We are sending them within the same week. Um, we are traveling for a month after um, we send our shipments out. So it's not a huge issue for us because we will not be in an empty house. But the two different options are, when you're moving Oconus, usually have a lender or loaner furniture. So wait until very last minute and then ship your stuff or ship it early and then travel like we are. So just as an example for us, our dates are June 25th. They come to pick up our unaccompanied baggage. And then the following week um, on June 28th through July 1st, they will be picking up our household goods. Um, the unaccompanied baggage leaving on June 25th is guaranteed to be there by August 2nd, so that's about a month. Um, the household goods um, leaving July 1st will, is guaranteed to be there by September 23rd, so that's about three months, um, which is pretty standard. So knowing that you're not gonna have your stuff for three months, you have to decide what you can live without for three months. 
and what you need in that first shipment. Um, we also, our non-temp storage stuff is going into non-temp storage um, around July 8th. So um, we just spread that out a little bit because my husband will be here and me and the kids will be gone. So um, just keeping that in mind, um, when you're moving Oconus, they say to wait till last minute to put your furniture in storage or to ship your furniture because you have stuff you can use there. And when you're leaving Oconus, ship it early because you can again use that lender for loaner furniture um, on that end and then ship your stuff because back in the United States, they typically don't have loaner furniture. So um, shipping it earlier on the other side is better and shipping it later on the Kona side is better, typically is what I'm reading. Um, they're also just putting it out there. It says guaranteed date, but let's be honest, <laughs> nothing is guaranteed in the military. Stuff comes when it wants. If it does not get there in time, you can file a claim for inconvenience to get money to buy um, some of the stuff that you're gonna need that you've been waiting for. So, um, things like linens or kitchen wares that you absolutely need. Um, so there is an inconvenience claim that you can file. One last item of note. Um, I just wanted to share um, one of my dear friends, Megan Harless, has been working very hard with making changes in um, our move process. Um, it hasn't always been seamless. It's never going to be seamless, but she is making waves in the um, in the government side by asking for certain things. I mean, her name is pretty well known within our uh, military community. She does have a military affiliated moving group. It's called Smooth Moves. Um, and it's just about military moves. It can be OCONUS or CONUS. So if you're looking for a place to get connected, to ask questions, just to read, um, her group is really fantastic. I'll be sure to link that in the um, descriptions, but she's also made some books to make this easier. Um, you can find them actually on Amazon, PCS Like a Pro, um, Your Guide to a Smooth Move. It's got um, just various different worksheets and everything else um, that show you uh, like the different acronyms, the process, how you do everything, what you're entitled to. Um, so if you're looking for something in writing, I love having things in writing. You can purchase the whole kit and it has a binder. Um, and so her group is great. If you want accurate, up-to-date information, that's where you need to be in her Facebook group that I will link in the bottom. And I'll also link um, this on face um, on Amazon where you can purchase this if you just want um, you know the whole kit and it's got helpful things for the whole process um, you don't have to do this alone there is help out there there is information sometimes we all get stuck um, you know I don't pretend to know it all this is our first military move since we've been together and um, I'm learning as I go but I just want to share the information with everyone so if there's any questions you have, any comments, um, anything you want to share, please share those in the comments. Like, subscribe, show us some love. And um, until next time from Simper Adventure.